All right. Hello, everybody online. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, we're here uh, while some people are still joining. We're here with a another webinar, Media Experts. Camille, thank you for, uh, for being here. My name is uh, Stuart Alkema. Um, we're going to talk, of course, about um, yeah, unlocking full potential of your Microsoft 365. That's, that's what we always uh, enable and always want to talk about. And this time, specifically about Copilot for Microsoft 365. And uh, it's about Copilot on steroids. So, and what that means, um, we'll uh, share with you uh, today. Also, including a, a nice uh, demonstration of one of the things we uh, make possible to have your Copilot on steroids. But first, um, a little bit different than the other ones. I'm going to start with a with a couple of slides to uh, to provide some uh, some context, uh, because I think because of this sort of new topic. Uh, that is important, and I'll keep it short so that you can actually watch the, the solution uh, for my Camille because everyone wants that, you know, not just my boring talks. So first, first some housekeeping. Um, the webinar is being recorded. You will receive the recording uh, also if you joined, also if you're not joined. Um, and if there are any questions, uh, please use the chat. Uh, we'll try to capture them uh, while we are uh, uh, going through the webinar. Also, I want to share that maybe we run a little bit over uh, because of the interesting topic and all that we want to share. Um, I'll try not to, but if we if we do, uh, sorry if you can't uh, stick around if you have another meeting. Otherwise, you'll you'll get the recording as well. Okay. The agenda, the introductions. Uh, this is Camille. <laughs> this is me. Uh, Camille is the second time here uh, actually, so maybe you've seen him uh, before in one of the media experts. Uh, this time it's about uh, uh, Copilot, of course. So that's what I want to uh, talk about first, quickly, how Copilot for Microsoft 365 specifically fits within the within the Cilio realm of solutions. And then after that, we're going to go into a live demo of our uh, platform and we'll show integrations with Copilot because that's one of the uh, solutions we have. And of course, there's Hopefully some room for Q&A, but otherwise, please feel free to share in the chat while you are here. Um, so to set the stage, uh, um, the context, uh, our, our platform that we have created, that we use for migrations, for integrations and for monitoring um, your SharePoint environment, but also your, your migration. This is the platform that has been there already for quite some time and that you've seen before, right? So it is an ETL. Uh, uh, tool. We use it also to discover your, your data. We use it to transform your data, to do your migration, basically. That's what we've been doing for 20 years. But for Copilot, it's also very relevant because, um, uh, yeah, maybe Camille, um, you, you can also share that you've been working on the integration, but um, for Copilot, it's basically also a migration, right? The integration side, you, you need to transform your data, you need to map your data, and for an AI to, to work uh, the best for you, it's it's necessary that you clean your data, that you deduplicate your data, that you structure your data in, in the best way possible, that you um, enrich your data with, with the right metadata. Basically, everything we always have been doing and we have the platform for in, in every migration integration. So that's why um, yeah, we feel that we're very capable and we see uh, that it's happening already for also these integrations because they are mini migrations, basically. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the platform, yeah, yeah you, you uh, already know it or otherwise we'll go into it uh, some other time. I might want to have a session about the link redirector specifically, I think now, but that's then for later. Um, then one more slide um, with a lot of text, but this is um, to position how Xilio uh, can help you in your journey to Copilot success, Copilot for Microsoft 365. So you saw the platform uh, just now, but it's not just about the platform, of course. It's also about understanding the capabilities of uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot, understanding um, uh, how you should prompt. So those two things we captured in the, in the first two phases. And then, of course, there's also the implementation uh, uh, and uh, the adoption and understanding how you uh, implement it. So through through a discovery, those 
those uh, phases we have uh, we offer as well uh, either with partners if they are very large or uh, very specific or ourselves um, um, but the next steps that's where really the prep platform uh, and our own services or through partners uh, come come into play it's about curating and keeping updated your curated uh, content because then um, you really can reap the benefits of your AI if it's if it's the right content and uh, if it has the right permissions, right? It's very important that you don't just move in data from another source or integrate data from another source and don't think about uh, the permissions because Copilot for Microsoft 365, it takes into account permissions, luckily, right? Yeah. Um, so you need them to be correct because uh, otherwise you can ask questions and get answers basically that or use data in your creation or in your uh, uh, process that you don't you just shouldn't have access to. Then integrating, we'll, we'll show that uh, with, with Camille uh, and migrating, of course. I mean, it's maybe even another driver to move your data into SharePoint because it's then part of your uh, of the of the set of data that your co-pilot can 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 use and your assistant uh, in your day to day work can use for you to make your uh, make your job easier. And once it's all in, uh, and maybe anyway, you also want to keep in control and take care of your content. And that's also one of the solutions we have with content care. We had a session on that as well before, and maybe it's time to uh, show some updates uh, on that as well uh, in the near future. But that's that's basically everything that we were already doing, except the prompting and and, and some of the uh, discovery around Copilot specifically. But it fits the story so perfectly. So um, yeah, that's why we we're very enthusiastic about Copilot and AI in general. Um, and and that's why we really wanted to show you. And one of the things um, I mentioned. Um, and we have a question I see, but I want to share uh, is the webinar. Uh, I didn't mention it, but it was on the slide. So we have a, a co-pilot Kickstarter masterclass. It's uh, free. It's online. Um, you can register now uh, already. Uh, it's the 7th of May. Um, it's about, yeah, what can you do with, uh, with co-pilot? How does prompting work? What are the different features of co-pilot uh, within, within Microsoft? So. Uh, it's good to know. Uh, uh, you'll you all get a link also to register, but uh, that's something uh, that I wanted to share. Then there's a question. Can you uh, see it? Yeah. Why why do we have a presentation in English? Ah, very good. Any specific reason? Yeah. There's a there's a reason. That's because Copilot can then transcribe it and we can summarize it. No, that's not the reason. But it's because we have an international audience uh, all over the world basically. So that's why the the presentation is in English. Um, and if you're Dutch and if you uh, want to talk about it uh, because uh, English is, is not your main language, you want to talk in Dutch, uh, that's fine. Just reach out. I'm happy to, uh, happy to do that. So, yes, we will share the link of the Copilot Kickstarter um, later on through, uh, through email. Uh, uh, so that will follow. Then one slide. So if you look at Copilot, Copilot on steroids. Um, why on steroids? Because we can do a lot of things that make it better. Um, and this is this is maybe a, a good overview and also the difference between services and platform and where services uh, touch the platform because we do services or our partners do services uh, uh, with pieces of the platform. Um, so on the top, the whole prompting, the discovery phase, the adoption, uh, and implementation mainly through partners that's really services right it's uh, understanding what you can do with it and actually implementing it in a phased uh, way and then one level lower it's about curating and updating so we'll actually connect to your sharepoint environment we'll get out all the data we'll, we'll create insights um, we'll see what the quality of the metadata is what maybe there there are duplicates maybe structures aren't um, uh, that organize everything that is taken into account by your AI uh, and make sure that's updated. Then, of course, migrations. We do a lot of migration projects. Our partners do a lot of migration projects with our software. Um, if you get it into SharePoint in, in a good way, clean, with the right permissions, etc., um, then it can be used. Uh, and then integration. 
um, we're gonna we're gonna show you you can integrate other sources that you do not want to migrate into uh, SharePoint, at least not not fully, not all the all the documents. So you have a CRM solutions that you use separately. You have a SAP environment. You have a um, maybe a separate uh, solution for your contracts. I don't know. There are, there are a lot of examples of uh, data that could still be beneficial for your knowledge workers or for your uh, uh, employees to to use in their creative process uh, in their following their their day to day job, but should sit really in a separate system. That's where the integration use case uh, comes in, and we think it's a it's a very interesting one, especially for us because. Uh, it's a mini migration, as I said, because you need to be careful with the with the transformation. You need to be careful with the permissions, and um, um, yeah, that's why why it's such a good fit. Then monitoring care talked about already, but also that's a part service, part uh, product, and this all running on we think a foundational data layer for your AI. So we already have that um, uh, ETL platform where we have our central database. If we migrate, if we integrate, we extract data into our central database. There we transform, there we unify. Um, so that that's basically the foundational layer for your AI if you use Clio platform in in your Microsoft 365 environment. And with that, I asked Copilot, what's the Copilot on steroids? So they get this. Basically, steroids is clear, I guess. Uh, maybe the copilot must might well it's a robot. Um, so you get maximized productivity and creativity gains, we think. You have the right data, you have all your content that you could have. Cross system even, I think that's a that's a very important one and uh yeah, uh, a very interesting one as well. Um and while you're at it, when you're moving uh, data around or moving data into your SharePoint, saving costs, mitigating risks of all legacy, etc improving data quality also in general, because if you do that um, curation uh, because you want to get the most out of your AI, um, it also helps up, uh, helps with tra traditional browsing or traditional search, of course. So it's uh, it's it's never bad to curate your, your data. So um, I want to stop talking now so we can actually uh, look at the, at the platform because that's also why this session is there. I thought I was going to need uh, 15 minutes, so I did it very quickly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, so uh, Camille, let's uh, take a look. Yeah, you're going to show the platform first, right? Yeah, I'm going to first uh, share my screen. Yeah, sorry. Stop here. See that. Is there any... No, OK. If there are any questions up until now, please feel free. Um, just shortly, uh, my name is Camille, as uh, short mentioned. Mostly I work on migrations, but as well I have plans with analyzing their data, with presenting dashboards, and I'm also interested in AI, that's why I took this opportunity to show you guys the uh, integration. And this one is based on HubSpot, which is like deals uh, platform for your, uh, like deals and contracts platform for storing your documents. And then we had the idea to visualize the data in uh, Copilot. Yeah, maybe on HubSpot. So it's actually a CRM we use as uh, Exilio, uh, and we're not going to show you our data. We created some fake uh, data, um, but um, yeah, first look at the platform. But we actually yeah. have a HubSpot integration. It's one that uh, yeah. So I'm going to show you a few things. One, a, a picture of high level overview. Then we go to the so for uh, software and the workflows. I'm going to briefly go over the admin setup and how it looks like. And we're going to see how the data is visualized in SharePoint. And then we're going to try some uh, prompting based on this uh, data. Yeah, combined with our data that we have uh, in our SharePoint, of course. Yeah, exactly. So Xilio is in the middle. And what we are doing, we are extracting data from HubSpot from the source system on the left side. Then we store it in our content store below Xilio. That's where we do all the transformations. And we add context to the uh, objects, in this case, deals. And then we send it over the uh, graph API, so it's indexed uh, by the semantic index, and then used by Copilot. Yeah, so it's maybe also good to share, uh, and you're going to maybe still say that, but we don't move it into SharePoint as, as a no, document. Or not the it's really just the information about it, yeah, the metadata. So exactly, it's just the metadata contextual information through the graph API into the index, right? Yeah, so we are like mimicking basically graph connector, and they are not 
allows to sh send binary information, they only can send uh, text values. Yeah. So the only thing we send is like a metadata information regarding this course. Right. And then we will move to the yeah to the live demo. I will start with our uh, um, project overview of uh, Excel 4. You can see it's run in a browser, and then we see we see multiple flows, and then one of them is the Copilot connector that we created for uh, ingesting the data to SharePoint. And then you can see we have multiple options for the source system, like HubSpot, for example, that we can actually extract data from, integrate with uh, Copilot, and send it over. Yeah, and you see other connectors, Alfresco, Documents, and Open Text Content Server. Could be the case that yeah, I just picked few. Yeah, yeah. So. And of course, these are also migration uh, connectors, right? So we see a lot of migrations of open text going into SharePoint because they want to uh, get rid of their on-premise uh, system. But it could be that you have a specific um, process running and that you want to keep an open text. So it could also be relevant still for integration uh, if, if you want to use Copilot uh, with your uh, uh, open text data as well. Maybe there are contracts in it and you want to keep them in it, or I don't know what the reason would be, but uh, it could be, yeah. So I'm going to show you the, how the um, Microsoft Graph Connector flow looks like. So there are a few steps that we need to complete. First, we need to create a connection in SharePoint. We have to create the schema for this connector. And then once those steps are done, then we can, we can in, in just uh, index data uh, into the SharePoint. Yeah, so maybe what we're looking at now is the, the actual uh, connector, right? So the Xil or platform is low code, so you, you pull in all yeah, these uh, new components that we can drag and drop. Um, and that's so how you create a connector. But if the creator is, if it, or if the connector is created, of course, it's there, uh, so so you can use it. And we, we just we, we create a lot of them, but you can always create your own, uh, yeah. basically. But this is how it then looks uh, uh, in uh, detail. Yeah, and we can configure it easily by passing the right credentials, like tenant IDs, client IDs, and secrets. And the specific name for this uh, connector is, for example, Copilot Connector. And then if I can show you, let me see. Yeah, I'll move to Admin Center. Because once we uh, create the connection schema, we can then uh, see it in our Admin Center in SharePoint that there's a new data source. In this case, it's Copilot Connection. You see there are, there's been some items indexed as well. And there are two steps that we need to manually do it, that we can do with uh, uh, our connector is to add a search vertical and a result type. So in our case, it's going to be uh, a copilot, and we also need a specific uh, schema for the for this uh, for the visual visualization of data, which I'm going to show you next. Yeah, and that's why it's also it's like a mini migration, right? Or uh, I mean, in the integration, you also need to map. So you do need to map yeah. so your data. You need to be aware where you're going to put different values, also because of how it will be used, basically by uh, by your uh, AI. Also because we to give it a specific schema which properties you want to uh, yeah. send and which uh, ones are uh, visualize. So the way we do it is uh, we can find, for example, if I'm going to look for up spots in our uh, tenant. You're going to see in the first overview there are all the files, so it's not going to be uh, as visible yet. And then if you look on the right, you're going to have our new search vertical copilot that I added. And once I click on it, you can, you're going to see some uh, example of the demo data that, that we created. So there are some company names, fake deal amounts, when it was created, and uh, with, who was the contact person. And those can be actually created by the uh, yeah. by the copilot. So we made some nice examples. So you can see the <coughs> it shows some uh, big companies like uh, yeah, Microsoft, Microsoft, Netflix, Google, Apple. <coughs> yeah. So you can only see it now in the in the search vertical. Yeah, so this is the integrated data. Yeah. Right? So once it's the, it's ingested in the SharePoint, that's how it looks like, and it's in the form of adaptive card. And this is uh, very easily adjustable to the client's requests. Yeah. It could have less columns or more rows, different logos, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And let's say if you, for example, would look for a specific uh, company like Apple, you can find it here, but as well in the all search. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably one of the yeah one of the Result. Okay. Yeah, so that's how it works. And I didn't show the HubSpot connector flow, but it's similar to the Microsoft Graph 
only a bit more uh, groups as well. And this is storing the data into the context store, just for the. For yeah, the so this pulls it out of HubSpot um, yeah. and stores it into our database, our context store. Where we can migrate transformations. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, we can ingest it uh, via this, con this connector. And then we can uh, play with, with the copilot by uh, trying and some prompts. And if you so, and if you go back to that HubSpot connector, so if you, yeah. um, so this is being created by us and can be used by customers, partners, uh, right? Yeah. Um, with the uh, specific uh, access of it. So you yeah. create uh, yeah. an application in HubSpot in order to connect to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, so we had the example be, of Apple. Maybe let's focus on this one. Okay. Let's ask him some. Uh, yeah, and if you so I can uh, imagine if uh, so we in integrated our CRM system. Um, I am sales. I'm writing a proposal, um, and I know. So I'm in my office Microsoft 365 environment. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to create a proposal, and I know we did do something with Apple before. Um, I need a good introduction for my new deal with Apple. Um, maybe you can create this introduction for me uh, because that's really where the uh, co-pilot assistant, I think, uh, comes in handy. Um, and then reference to that old deal or that previous deal that we uh, did. Yes, I'm going to try to rephrase <laughs> what yeah, you're saying. I know we have used deal with Apple before, find the information about the deal and yeah, use. Yeah. And introduction. And in that webinar that, that we're going to do, um, prompting is going to be very a very big part of it because that's it's really key. Like, um, yeah, it's it's basically everything if you uh, if you use uh, if you uh, work with uh, your uh, AI assistant or co-pilot here specifically. No, uh, it's all about prompting. Yeah, the better the prompt, of course, the more accurate it's going to be. Yeah, the result. The, yeah. So let's see if the um, and now we're using just the copy chat, but you also can use it in Excel, Word, and uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so it writes an introduction. We're excited to present this proposal for your consideration, drawing upon our successful partnership history. Exactly, notably our network security audit project that we did with Apple in 2017. Even this conversation alone is so. This is this is great, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, and the rest is just it's also based on the on the language model, but also of course potentially what we already have been uh, um, creating in terms of uh, proposals. So um, yeah, this is how it works. Cool. So imagine if you have already templates, it could fill in the gaps really easily with the right relevant information. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And I was I was now really wondering uh, from the people in the call, um, what would be uh, systems um, sources that you would be uh, interested in to to integrate? Um, what do you think uh, would be relevant for for you specifically, or maybe your your customers if you're if you're a system integrator or a service company yourself? Um, maybe you can put it in the chat. Uh, we would be very interested to uh, to hear about that. Um, and if you think that this, maybe in general, also this integration, of course, our SaaS, Salesforce, Power Browser, that's uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see some uh, some. Yeah, and and that's that's in those are the. Uh, uh, indeed, the systems that we also had in mind, the, the more task specific systems that that are not part of your Microsoft environment, but uh, need to have very relevant information about um, uh, things that you do within your Microsoft environment, like creating documents or handling claims and you open up Word and you start to write a response and you need some information from Power Browser because the 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 request was handled in there, for instance. So uh, yeah, we really see that use case as well. Um, so that's great. Same of course, and same with Salesforce actually, which is of course a uh, um, 
Yeah, that's a large one. As you mentioned, for each of the items to be ingested in the index, you have to specify the ICO, so the user that is. So you need to give the specific user ID from SharePoint. That is we are, that is going to be going to be allowed to see the information. Otherwise, it won't work. <coughs> okay, so, so it'll be really right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The user yeah. And groups. Yeah, which makes sense because it's very potentially be quite sensitive information. And there there is already, of course, a um, uh, permission uh, model in in the in the system that you integrate. Uh, but it's always good to to do a check at least as well. That's also also what we do with every migration where we extract all the permissions and together with our customer look at it. Is it still correct or do you want to change anything? And maybe there's update in your information architecture that you want to um, and try another prompt because we have the contact information, but I don't see any email. Maybe you can give me the email as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. So maybe any other systems that come up that could be interesting for integration. These are three I know from government uh, organizations, which are very interesting for sure. Or any other questions? No. Yeah, I think this is especially really good for yeah, creating uh, text uh, templates. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you see possibilities to connect to external SaaS applications? If yes, how does it work? Do they need an API to talk to? So yes, definitely. And we would need an, an API to talk to that SaaS application, right? Yeah. Um, to create the connector. Yeah, so we create a connector on that on that API, uh, and then we pull out uh, the data, uh, and we store it into our uh, environment, and that could run in your tenant or yeah, basically anywhere. Um, and um, uh, yeah, do do the transformation that's that that's needed, and periodically move it into into your index, um, because that's also the um maybe beauty of, of these types of integrations um it's not a it's not a continuous uh, sync that is needed right you need you need to run run a certain delta of the information periodically because it has been added and then you add it into your um into your index so that your um people in your organization can use it again uh, but it's not at least most of the use cases i see it's not per se necessary it's part of their creative process it helps them it's not per se necessary that they search for it and then they need to find it because it it is there right so um, um although it could still maybe be a continuous sync but i don't okay. think it's uh, per se necessary makes it a bit easier on the you integrate could figure it to update it every week once a week yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah it's gonna if the document will change or the information is gonna be updated The only thing you would not have is like the audit logs. So if you wanted to go back then, you couldn't really go easily back. So. Right. Yeah. 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 That's part of integration. So you okay? You rewrite it. So the top desk. I think top desk is uh yeah um definitely uh, and actually that's also one of the use cases I um think is very relevant if you're like a back office uh, employee or you're handling requests or complaints or stuff like that then typically you're in this environment uh, where you could really benefit of copilot um and um, um you're in this environment where you could really benefit from copilot and i saw already some some examples of that and so top desk and other uh, of these systems we're, we're really looking into that uh, so yeah definitely okay um we, we made it in half an hour, um, so thank you all very much. Please register for the for the the free masterclass. It's really full of um, information and actual real practical tips and tricks and uh, learnings. Um, 
So I hope to see you all there. I won't be um, presenting it, but I'll definitely be join, joining myself as well. Um, thank you all. Uh, Camille, thank you. Thank you very again much for this one. Yeah, you're uh, and hope to see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.